I do not do this often, but I do need to pause for a moment and make a correction, okay? Um, we did a joke on Wednesday about Sean Spicer avoiding reporters by hiding in the bushes, okay? It had been reported that he was hiding in the bushes after Comey right, right. was fired, okay? Right. Well, the Washington Post has since updated that report saying, editor's note, Spicer huddled with his staff among bushes on the White House grounds, not in the bushes. All right, it's a subtle difference. I'll show it to you. We bring up bushes out here, guys. Thanks very much. All right. Now, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, okay, there you go. So he wasn't hiding in the bushes, okay? He was hiding among the bushes, okay? Totally different. You see how much more reassuring this is? This is perfectly dignified. Okay? And Sean Spicer hiding is a great way to teach our kids about prepositions, okay? Sean Spicer hides among the bushes, okay? <laughs> Sean hides next to the bushes. And my favorite, Sean hides from the bushes because one of the bushes asked him a question about James Comey. Remember, Sean, they're not laughing at you. They're laughing among you. <laughs> now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Of course, Trump isn't the only politician trying to sell you something because Bill Clinton and James Patterson are teaming up to write a novel. It's called The President is Missing. Ooh, that's dramatic. That's a dramatic title. And it's much more dignified than the original title, have you seen my husband? <laughs> well, where he is? I don't know where he is. Well, we got an advanced copy of the book. Let's just see if I can detect Bill Clinton's subtle influence on the classic James Patterson thriller. Here we go. <clears throat> Chapter two is where it gets really, really hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ken Brantley swung his agile body onto the roof. He smiled, thinking of the moment he would corner his mark and take him out with a single shot. He also smiled because he was thinking of boobs. <laughs> Brantley shook his head, determined to focus on the threat ahead. Butts are cool, too, he thought. <laughs> They're like boobs on your back. Stay focused, Ken, he told himself. <laughs> You've got a boob to do. I mean, a job to butt. Damn it! <laughs> and he shoots the guy. And he shoots the guy. <laughs> That's an actual book. Uh, speaking of books, any Game of Thrones fans out there? <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Me too. That show has everything. It's got great characters, pulse-pounding action, fleeting moments when no one is naked. So, <laughs> I was so excited to learn that HBO is now developing several Game of Thrones spin-offs. This is perfect for all the people who watch Game of Thrones and think, there just aren't enough character names for me to keep straight. <laughs> and what will these new spin-offs be about? Well, apparently. They will explore different time periods of George R. R. Martin's vast and rich universe. That is exciting. Maybe now we'll find out which time period he's dressing for. I'm gonna say <laughs> steampunk newsy in Nazi-occupied Brooklyn. <laughs> well, we here at The Late Show, because we're in show business, we're in show business, yes. make no mistake, we here at The Late Show have obtained an exclusive first look at these new Game of Thrones spinoff TV shows. First up, what happens when the most exciting character in Game of Thrones moves in next door to Tim Allen? That's my dragon. <laughs> next, spring is here, and that means nuptials. Follow real brides on their journey to the big day in Say Yes to the Red Wedding Dress. <laughs> and of course, everyone loves police procedurals and undead zombie armies and tight jeans and karate. So get ready for White Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> We got a great show for you tonight. Stick around. Tracy Morgan is here.